Hello and welcome to my art channel. My name is Christina Moyer and I'm a two-dimensional artist here in Turner Valley, Alberta. In today's video, you're gonna see a time-lapse of this painting right behind me, a picture that was sent to me by my brother-in-law, Jimmy. So thanks, Jimmy, for the picture and I hope you enjoy. Let me know in the comments below what you think about this different background that I've created. It's kind of more of a contemporary conceptual type of background, but different than I would normally do. So let me know what you think about that. All right, so let's just get started with this background. So I started with an underpainting of raw sienna, and then once that dried, I started putting all these greens and browns on top and white. So I was trying to get kind of a blurry background effect, but maintaining kind of the circular look as well, because there was kind of this, a bit of a bokeh effect in the background of the painting picture I was looking at. And so I was trying to maintain that and be true to it, but then I was really struggling with it. And so, I will do layer upon layer upon layer. <laughs> I don't know how much paint I ended up using on this small canvas, this 11 by 14, but it was just outrageous. Sometimes the background comes together for me really well, and then other times I struggle. And I think because I was trying to follow the picture, but then I was also trying to do my own thing and then figure out the paint, and it was just, it was a bit of a mess. And then I wasn't really sure what I wanted, so, you know, if you don't know what direction you're going in, it kind of makes a bit of a mess. So I kind of wanted it to be a blurry background, but I wanted to get the coloring in right. And it wasn't totally blurry. Like there was, you could actually see the cir circles, but they weren't so prominent. So you're going to see how this turns out anyways. Uh, I did like where I was starting to go and when I was creating kind of these smaller circles, but then I felt like they were too prominent when I was um, doing this and maybe my tonal values were too extreme, like too light and too dark. So that might've been part of it, but I just felt like they, it, it was too textured in the background. I wanted it to be smoother looking. And so you, you'll see where I go with this. This is an interesting time lapse for me because this is almost painful to watch, but also, you know, it's good to accept your journey and kind of see where you go and what happens. Oh my goodness, look at that. Just boom, boom, totally change it. So much paint, just let it dry, add more, unhappy with it, make it lighter, you know, direction keeps changing. And I keep thinking, okay, let's add more and more paint so that just it's going to stay wet longer because I'm using acrylics and then let's just blend it in and get these circular blurry background look this is just the background like this isn't even the bird and I spent most of my time trying to figure out this background because a lot of the background does show and it does make a huge difference for the piece I think you'll have to let me know if you like the background I'm not sure I, I feel like I'm obsessing about it but I'm a little bit insecure about it. So <laughs> hopefully someone finds it interesting and and I can accept it now. It's different, but there's something to it that I like about the glazing that I start to create as I go along. And I didn't work with glazing that much in terms of using a, a medium for glazing, like a glazing liquid. Uh, medium normally I would just thin down my paint but and that's absolutely fine as well but this in this video you'll see how I my process of kind of figuring out hmm I kind of like these cir circles let's keep playing around with this at this point right here I think that's actually pretty cool but keeping in mind that I have to put this bird on top of it it just felt like it's not quite there and I needed to get these greens adding in like I actually like this painting right here I think that looks pretty cool personally. I could have almost just left it as this interesting circular painting. Maybe it was a scientific thing where, you know, maybe a, a close up microscopic look at something. And then I was trying to blend those circles in, but the paint was already dry at that point. So you're trying to blend in or it was drying. And, and so then I'm fiddling around constantly trying not to give up on this piece especially because once you've added so much paint you don't want to waste it so I absolutely do think about that when I'm painting I don't like to waste paint I don't doesn't feel right and so as in here I started to kind of thin out some areas when I was adding paint to kind of have some areas that were you know kind of like that glazing effect that I was talking about 
um, kind of not too prominent and that kind of thing. So I'm kind of working that out while also trying to maintain some areas that were popping and I liked the, the popping green, but then I kind of was wondering, maybe this is actually too dark and <laughs> my contrasts just keep changing. So this is, this is the process that happens. It's not always easy. So what I'm doing here now is using a glazing liquid medium. And I was thinking, you know what, let's try and instead of create, you know, um, blurring, gradual blurring in between, let's, you know, do this over top. Well, I kind of liked what I did on the left, but then when I started making them, when I tried to blend in these like circular ones, it was not working out right. That was not right. <laughs> Oh, what what I go through. Sometimes you don't know, right? You see the end result or, you know, I guess if you watch these then you know, but so then I'm making some of them brighter again and then I'll get to a point where, yeah, so I thought I was finished. And I'm like, hey, it's finished. I accept it. Then I go back to it. I'm like, I don't like it. I have to do something to this. So then I started using the glazing medium with some brighter colors and just playing around with it because I'm like, you know what? I can't make it any worse so let's just go with this and I thought maybe this would help to create more depth in it and purpose in all of these glazed circles and things so that was kind of part of my process and decision making because there's a lot of decisions that you make when you're painting and some of them are not so easy and so I'm just trying to create a good amount of layering that looks intentional and that makes sense, that works cohesively. So as I was making more layers, I was kind of feeling like, you know what? This is actually coming together a bit better, I think. There were parts where I was wondering, okay, maybe I should have just done my very first layer and then just kept that. <laughs> but you gotta work through these challenges. And I was starting to feel like, this is cool. And I almost like it just as it is. <laughs> So then I was like, hey, we're good. We're good to start getting this bird on there. So I sketched it out in a um, chalk pastel and then started adding my, blocking my colors in. And it's a red cardinal, as you know, in the title. So getting these bright reds in. And it was interesting because you think, oh, I'm painting, you know, this red bird. I just felt like so much of it wasn't red, what I was painting. I mean, initially, yes as an underlayer, but what I was going over with, it just was so interesting to see how much um, of more of an orangey and browns and, you know, almost this purplish mauve color that was going in. It's so interesting when you're actually paint, trying to paint what you see and not what you think is there, or just because of the name of something, what you actually create. So I'm just getting all these little parts, the beak, Kind of blocked in all these little bits blocked in so that when i start adding subsequent layers um oh there's steven <laughs> a little view of my hubby in that part of the video yeah i think he was watering the plants so he takes care of the garden and all the plants i love it i get to enjoy them and he loves to do that so it's a bonus for me so i'm just getting all the highlights in this beautiful bird it's just perched up and I don't know I haven't really researched what it means when they're the top of their hair is like poking up like that or if it always is like that like what what is this bird thinking but I do love to think about that when I'm painting something living like an animal or a person like I try to think about or comes to mind anyways just what is this creature person thinking what's happening what just happened these are fun things to think about, in my opinion. So, yeah, let's just keep adding layers. As you can see, I'm getting around the belly, around the wings, top of the head. And I just keep working through different colors and eventually getting to my brightest tones, like most extreme tones, whether that's really light or really dark, depending on the area. Like if I'm blocking in that black around the face, that is just going in right fully black because there's not much variation in that but i do add bits of tonal change within there um, depending on the picture 
So there was, I mean, you get the little eye and that kind of thing in there. So that I will get. I just love adding those little bits of detail, that really bright highlight points are really fun to, to jot in. We're just going to carefully get the eye and I'm basically just using this angled brush. I think it's like a half inch and pretty much most of the painting I'm using that for at least painting the bird and the branch that it's perched on, including its feet and everything. Like I really love this brush for painting birds of this size. So this is an 11 by 14 canvas just to give you a bit of an idea of how big my hand is there and <laughs> how big the bird is. Yeah, it was a really beautiful bird. I love the wing, how the highlight went around the tip of it in just such a beautiful way. And the tail was just so cool and had lots of this kind of dusty rose color um, within the tail, which was kind of fun. Yeah, and if you're painting, it's just, you get to certain points, I feel like, that maybe you give up or you think you don't know how to go forward. And that's why it's great to, you know, take a, an art class or watch other artists that are a step above you to see what they're doing, to know how you can up your game and improve your pieces so they can feel more finished to you. And, and also just accepting where you're at. Like, I feel like, you know, we're not accepting, at least this is how I feel for myself. I'm not very accepting of where I'm at, but I'm always focused on where I want to be. And so I need to appreciate more where I'm at and, and have joy in what I can create now. While continually working on it will help me to to get where I want to be. If I don't have any appreciation for it, where I am, I don't think that you can lose motivation and it can really hinder your ability to progress in those things. So here I'm getting the little branch that goes across and that this bird is perched onto and the larger branch that it's, that that's supporting the little branch. <laughs> so I'm gonna do the branch first and then I'm gonna do um, the feet afterwards. It just makes sense for this piece. And you'll notice at times here and there, I've either forgotten to press the record button, <laughs> or I thought it was recording, or sometimes it just had an automatic, oh, this stopped. I'm like, really? Thanks a lot. <laughs> I really enjoy painting this branch. Every branch I've painted, you know, it's kind of fun because certain areas it doesn't matter you know what you do and certain areas it does matter but in a branch you can kind of play around with where the little knobs are and and that kind of thing you do have to make some sense of the highlighting and that type of thing oh oh maybe that's when he came to water <laughs> i spotted steven in there again yeah i just really love the colors there's you'll notice these little green flecks, and I think I don't put them in till later, closer to the end, but I really love this branch. In the photograph, the branch also goes the other way. Um, there's one point of it that points to the left side going upward, but I decided for my piece, hey, I'm an artist, I get to choose, and I chose <laughs> where it's gonna be. Let's get those little feet in. It's kind of creepy when you're painting the feet, at least I find it's like, I was thinking about reptiles and dinosaurs and how we think about these, you know, T-Rex and stuff. And they have these crazy claws. They're, they're so scary. And then you look at these pretty birds that we have, right? And you just think, I wonder if they're just not as scary as we thought they were. And I have watched some things about dinosaurs, like having feathers, and I have no idea what the truth is behind all that so I'm not gonna get into it but oh here's where the little green specks are I just love like the little detail that goes in these little green specks along the branch and you don't notice it too much but just those little details that make all the difference make it look that much more realistic 
And yeah, so let me know what you think about this background. What do you think about this whole piece? Do you like it, love it, hate it? Let me know your opinion in the comments below. Oh, here comes Charlie. Up! He's like, how do I get up? Here. Over here. He's stuck. Come here, Bubby. <laughs> Come on, Charlie. Come here. Up! Oh, there you go. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Let's come up. Oh, come say hello. Come on, climb up. We need to get you a step up. A step up. Your bum. Get your bum up. Uh oh. <laughs> oh, here's Charlie. Hey, you doing one down there? Ah, oh, there we go. Here's Charlie. Oh, oh, he's a twitching. He was playing out in the with the hose. Daddy was having fun with the hose. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's looking outside. Oh, dreaming of quarter days. Quarter days out in the snow. So what you're dreaming of? Oh, what a world. Thanks for watching us. See you next time. Say goodbye, Charlie. Goodbye.